Advent of Code, <laughs> 2023, day 20, last, apparently the last day on Desert Island. Day 20, Pulse Propagation. With your help, the elves managed to find the right parts and fix all of the machines. Now they just need to send the command to boot up the machines and get the sand flowing again. The machines are far apart and wired together with long cables. The cables don't connect to the machines directly, but rather to communications modules attached to the machines that perform various initialization tasks and also act as communication relays. Modules communicate using pulses. Each pulse is either high pulse or a low pulse. When a module sends a pulse, it sends that type of pulse to each module in its list of destination modules. There are several different types of modules. Flip-flop modules are either on or off. They're initially off. If a flip-flop module receives a high pulse, it's ignored and nothing happens. However, if a flip-flop receives a low pulse, it flips between on and off. If it was off, it turns on and sends a high pulse. If it was on, it turns off and sends a low pulse. So only when it receives a low pulse. Okay. Conjunction modules prefix ampersand Remember the type of the most recent pulse received from each of their connected input modules. They initially default to remembering a low pulse for each input. When a pulse is received, the conjunction module first updates its memory for that input. Then, if it remembers high pulses for all inputs, it sends a low pulse. Otherwise, it sends a high pulse. Uh, okay, I'm assuming this is going to make sense. Once we start going through an example, maybe there's a single broadcast module named broadcaster. When it receives a pulse, it sends the same pulse to all of its destination modules. Here at Desert Machine Headquarters, there is a module with a single button on it called aptly the button module. When you push the button, a single low pulse is sent directly to the broadcaster module. After pushing the button, you must wait until all pulses have been delivered and fully handled before pushing it again. Never push the button if modules are still processing, processing pulses. Pulses are always processed in the order they are sent. So if a pulse is sent to modules A, B, and C, then module A process it, processes its pulse and sends more pulses. The pulses sent to modules B and C would have to be handled first. Okay, so okay, just a cue. Okay, got it. Module configuration, your puzzle input lists each module. The name of the module is preceded by a symbol identifying its type, if any. The name is then followed by an arrow and a list of destination modules. All right, so the percent was what? Flip-flop and ampersand is conjunction. Okay. In this module configuration, the broadcaster has three destination modules named A, B, and C, right? I understand. Each of these modules is a flip-flop module. A outputs to B, B outputs to C, which outputs to INV. INV is a conjunction module because it starts with ampersand, which, because it has only one input, acts like an inverter. It sends the opposite of the pulse type it receives. It outputs to A. By pushing the button once, the following pulses are set, sent. So button sends low to broadcaster, broadcaster sends low to A, to B, and to C. Then A sends high to B. B sends high to C, C sends high to INV, and INV sends low to A. OK. After this sequence, the flip-flop modules all end up off. So pushing the button again repeats the same sequence. Here's a more interesting example. Okay. An untyped module named output for testing purposes, of course. Okay. I, I think I, I think I understand what's, what's going on. We have to parse all these things. We have to figure out all of the outputs and where they send their pulses. The conjunction module is a little tricky because it's going to need to know, we can't just map all the outputs, right? We can't just say, okay, well, A sends an input to con. Con needs to know how many inputs it has. Um, 
which means we're going to have to do some trickiness. All right, what are we being asked? What do you get if you multiply the total number of low pulses sent by the total number of higher pulses sent? Um, how do you count a pulse? I guess each one of these is a pulse. First example, the same thing happens every time the button is pushed. Eight low pulses and four high pulses are sent. Let's take a look at the example here. So I see three lows and four lows. Oh, and then the button counts as a low. Okay, and then three highs and a high. Okay, so I see. So we're just counting up all the lows, all the highs, and then multiplying together. In the second example, oh, we got to push the button a thousand times. I missed that part. Yes, consult your module configuration. Determine the number of low pulses and high pulses that would be sent after pushing the button a thousand times. Waiting for all pulses, pulses to be fully handled after each push of the button. What do you get if you multiply the total numbers? Okay. All right. I think, I think I'm think i close to understanding what we need to do here. 2023, day 20. 58 lines worth of data. Let's take a look at them. See if thing, anything stands out. Here's the broadcaster. I don't see an output. So I guess there's no output for testing purposes. All right. Right, so for example, let's just pick one. NR is a conjunction. So every NR output is an input into NR. So we're gonna to have to gather these all up and then stick them in the NR module. I'm, I, I don't know of a good way to model this yet. Maybe as, as I parse it, I'll be able to figure it out. All right, we'll, we'll see. Day 20. Um, Nope. Okay, go up here. Wow. I just. 2320. There we go. All right, we got unsolved. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we're reading the input, as one does. Let lines equals AOC lib. Read lines. Input 2023.20.text. There we go. That part's done. Um, okay, so let's take a look. That's actually, we're going to grab uh, test input, right? So we have two different test inputs. We have this little guy, which should have eight pulses and four pulses. And then we have a more interesting example. And did they give you the output for that one? Yes. 1168.75.00. Okay. So cat test input two. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna just use the test input. There. Um, for line in lines, and we're gonna break it up into different modules. So I guess broadcaster is the only one that doesn't start with a percent or an ampersand. So I guess we can say, um, well, first we can split it, uh, left hand and right hand sides equals line split once, unwrap. Now we can say if LHS starts with a percent, then we're gonna generate a flip-flop. Um, else if LHS starts with an ampersand, oh, that's an ampersand, there we go. Uh, generate a conjunction. Otherwise, it's gonna be a broadcaster. Generate broadcaster. 
All right, I think that's the basic outline. Um, and then I guess the second half of the thing, the right-hand side just gets split into a comma-separated list of outputs. So let's see if we can model this thing here. We're gonna have um, struct a module and it'll be it'll have a type. I can't use type because that's a reserved keyword. I can use mod type. Uh, module type. We're going to have a certain outputs, which is a vec of string, I guess. Um, and we just store everything in a hash map. Um, and that way we can just look it up directly. Um, and then if we're a flip flop, we're going to have a current state. Right. If we have a low pulse, it's going to flip its current state from on to off, or between on and off, sorry. And the conjunction, I wonder if that should go inside. Oh, no, because we're going to have to change them. I was saying, you know, maybe the module type could be, uh, let's do this. You know, oh, why didn't that work? There we go. Um, module type could be a flip flop bool and then a conjunction which will have it's got to remember all of its inputs and what state the last input had so this will be a hash map from string to bool and then we have a oop, i forgot the comma there and then broadcaster Broadcaster, broadcaster. Let's pull that in. Is this all the information we need? And this is a good way to model it. Um, we're gonna have to be able to update these things on the fly. That's that should be fine. We can iter mute over them or something. So modules is gonna be a vector, no, a hash map of some string to module. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I think this will this should do. It. And they all start with low, right? Everything starts as false. I remember reading something like that and now I can't find it. Let's just look for the word low. There's a whole bunch of lows. Oh, why aren't they highlighted here? Oh, <laughs> they are, it's just very faint. All right, I, I, remember, I remember reading it, so I'm gonna just gonna assume that I re I'm remembering correctly. Everything starts with low, whatever. So to generate a flip-flop, we just need to create a new module with the name that's given on the left-hand side. So we're going to say self modules insert lhs one dot dot to string with a module containing a mod type of module type flip flop false. And outputs are going to be um, RAR HS um, split on comma space, right? Comma space, yeah, comma space. Um, collect. Does that build? Does not. Vec string. Oh, vec string can't be built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, map s s to string. And actually, this can be pulled out because it's going to be used for all three types. All right. So we can do that here. Uh, let RHS 
equals that, and then we can just put RHS here. There. Um, and then for conjunction, self modules insert LHS one dot dot to string. And the module is going to have a mod type of conjunction. Huh. And it's going to have hash map new. And we'll have to fill in the hash map later because we need to look at all of the modules that could output to a conjunction. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do that just yet. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then a broadcaster is easy. Self modules insert LHS one dot dot to string module mod type module type broadcaster outputs RHS. I can simplify that a little bit. All right, and then I should be able to print them all out. Um, self modules. Do I have it right? It's a, a is a flip flop. Um, with output of B. Inv is a conjunction with nothing in it yet. Outputs to A. Yeah. B is a flip flop module which outputs to C. Rodcaster. Oops, I got Rodcaster. Right, so this is where I made the mistake here. Oops. I didn't delete the right thing. There we go. Now it should say Broadcaster. Yes, Broadcaster. And outputs to A, B, and C. Nice. And then the last one was Inv. Oh yeah, we already looked at in. Okay, so I think I think we're parsing that part correctly. Now we have to figure out how to make sure that the conjunction knows what inputs it has. I guess as we're going through, what we could do is collect a list of all the conjunctions. And just push those. Right, um, and then we could use the name here, and then we can say conjunctions insert or push name clone. Right, and then we have a list of all the conjunctions. And right now it should just be inv. Yeah. And then we have to go through all of the outputs and find out what's sending that to the conjunction. This is a little awkward. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, and then we can, we can dump that out afterwards and see if we got it right. And then we'll try test input two. Actually, let's try test input two right now and see, because that wasn't that a little more complicated. Yeah, because now we have two things that have are outputting to conv, to con, and one that's going to inv. So we should be able to see that. Let me run that. Yeah, this outputs to con. So then what we want to see is in inv, we want to see um, a, and in con, we want to see a and b. Got it. Scoops, good morning. All right, so let's see if we can figure that out. <laughs> all right, for each conjunction, we're gonna go through all the modules and see if we can find it. Or, or we could just make one pass through all the modules and then look it up in a conjunction hash set. All right, and we can say, if that's a conjunction, then we can just add it to there. Okay, so let's try that. We're going to loop over all the modules for 
module in self modules. Actually, um, we should be able to do a key name module in self modules. And this will give us the name of the module we're mapping back to, right? Um, we need to check its outputs to see if they're in the conjugations. Uh, see, I said it, conjunctions. Um, and then, okay, so we can't get away from looping multiple times. So we can say now for module.output, out in module outputs. Yeah, then we get string. Hopefully that doesn't consume them. Because um, this should be a reference, yeah. If conjunctions contains out, then we're going to look up in the conjunctions and in, and modify its let conjunction is equal to oh we're we're looping over the modules so we can't modify the modules at the same time that we're all right <laughs> new plan plan C this is going to be a hash map um, and it's going to be a map from the conjunction name to a vector of inputs like that and then so this will be insert name clone hash oh vec new right and now what we can do here is if if let some Conjunction equals conjunctions get mute out. Then conjunction dot push name. Um, and then we can see what that looks like afterwards. And then we can then loop over the conjunctions and insert those back into the modules. That blew up. Oh, I thought I thought out was already a, a borrowed. It isn't. Okay. Is it now? Yes. And then name clone. All right. So con has inputs B and A, and inv has input A. Yes, that looks correct. Okay, and now we should be able to shove these back into the conjunctions <laughs> after all that. So but now we can loop over the modules and modify the modules for name module in uh, self modules iter moot. Uh, if let some conjunction equals conjunctions get name then we're going to say um, module dot oh conjunction mod type is equal to oh it doesn't like doesn't doesn't know it okay well let's keep typing because this is what I want to do and then we'll see if we can do it is equal to module type conjunction Oh, right. I need a hash map and a bool to say what it was. So that's what I want to actually push in here. Hash map of string to bool. Which means this has to be a hash map new. Which means this is going to be insert false, right? And then we can just say conj clone, hopefully, and see what happens. Genix lol, thank you for the follow. Welcome. All right. Um, 
Yeah, and then if we print out the modules afterwards, let's see if this builds. Imozdren, thank you for the follow. Oops, I got too many of these things here, and we're not using hash set anymore. Okay. All right, so where's the conjunction? Conjunction module. All right, starts here and goes to here. Yeah, so it, right, okay, so it has B false and A false and an outputs to output, right? So it's saying that we have low signals from B and A right now. All right, all right. I think we're done with the parsing part. Um, let's stop printing these things out. And then part one is just send a pulse. Oh, send a thousand pulses, right? And we're using test input two, so we should have we should get this number. Let's use the simpler one. Test input one. Uh, right. And now what we do is we just implement a pulse. So let's implement that over here, so we can just call it fn pulse mut self. Um, and it's going to return the count, I guess, of how many pulses, how many lows and highs went through, right? So I64, I64 will give us the low and high count, low pulse and high pulse count, um, because we have to multiply them at the end, right? So we can say, um, ooh. So let's start off by creating a queue. Um, from iter. And it's going to contain the broadcaster. Caster. And we're sending a low pulse, right? That's what broadcasters do. Or the button sends a low pulse to the broadcaster. So this is the button here. False. There we go. All right, so we can say now while let some pulse equals um, Q pop. Actually, I need to pull the vec deck in. There we go. Now we have to figure out what we're doing with the pulse. Oh, first we have to add to the pulse counts, right? So we're going to have a pulse count, which is going to be uh, zero, zero. And we can say, this is um, the destination and the, yeah, let's call it pulse like that. Oop. Like that. This should be the string and that should be the bool. Oh, syntax error, that's why. Let's see. Still unknown. Yeah, okay. I can put zero, zero here to get rid of that error. Try using, oh, oh no, that's right. I was, I'm trying to make a tuple in here. <laughs> Uh, pop front, right? Because we're going to push back pop front. There we go. Okay, so now we have something. That should be a string and that should be a bool. Perfect. So we're going to count the pulses. Um, P count pulse as u size plus equals one. That's the easy part. Now the hard part. So we're going to, the destination, we're going to look that up in our, in our modules map. Let Um, module is equal to self get mute of uh, dest unwrap. So this should be the module of oh, self uh, modules. There we go. So it's a now mutable reference to the module. Now we've received a pulse for this module. All right, now we can map on the module type, right? Match M. 
Oh, but if there's just like this output thing, I want to be able to account for that. Um, if let sum m, right? The others we can ignore. And then we can match on m. Convert to guarded return. No, I don't want to do that. I thought this was a, oh, it's not a module anymore. Oh, because I did an unwrap. We'll get there. There it is. Now can I match arms? Nope, I can't do that. Oh, because it's a module type. Um, let me destructure it. Module. Uh, mod type. And outputs, right? There we go. Now we can fill in the match arms. Yay, okay. So flip-flop of some value V or state S maybe would be a better, right? And we can say, what, is, what does flip-flop do? What do flip-flop do? Flip-flops are the either on or off. They're initially off. If the flip-flop module receives a high pulse, it is ignored and nothing happens. Okay, so if pulse is high, so we wanna say if not pulse, then we're going to do the thing and the thing is if it receives a low pulse it flips between on and off if it was off it turns on and sends a high pulse if it was on it turns off and sends a low pulse okay i think that's easy enough to do right all we need to do is flip the bit right and we have a mutable reference right inside that thing so we can do that and then we want to say for all of the outputs, um, is that a reference to? Yes. And so then we'll say Q push, and we'll push a new tuple of our output. We have to clone it, unfortunately. And we're going to send, turns off and sends a low pulse. It turns on and sends a high pulse. Okay. so. It's just whatever S is. All right, that's easy enough. Oh, not push, uh, push back. All right, because what we're doing is all in. Oh, dest. There we go. All right, um, we're getting we're getting there. Uh, it builds. Let's see if for conjunctions. Conjunctions, we get a little, instead of a state, we have a list of states, a state set, which is the hash map. Okay. So what does conjunction do? Right? It remembers everything. Initial, oh, this is it. This is what I was looking for. Initially remembering a low pulse for each input. Okay. When a pulse is received, the conjunction module first updates its memory for that input. All right, so we just say ss dot. Oh, um, we need to know who's sending it. Okay, um, right, because ss, we're gonna have to say ss uh, insert sender clone. Oh no, we can, Yeah, sender, clone, and then it's gonna flip it to whatever the pulse was that was sent, right? So pulse. Um, but we're missing the sender, and we need that from here. Sender, destination, and in the first one, it's the button sending it. There. Um, and then we're gonna have to update this as well, the sender for this. Um, is the destination. I don't know if I can just shove that in there like that. Okay. And then if it remembers high pulses for all inputs, it sends a low pulse. Otherwise it sends a high pulse. All right. So if, that means if all of them, all the bits are high, then we're going to send a low pulse. And if 
all any bit is low it sends a high pulse so that's um ss dot values dot fold true back and val is that is it that simple that's a bool that's a reference to a bool and that'll and everything together and then we want to not that right right because if any of them are low then this will end up being false and it will send true which is a high pulse and if it's all high pulses then we'll send a low pulse perfect okay and then we just do this again oh uh, except this is out now yeah we have to clone uh, that's what i figured A lot of cloning going on. Um, we're not calling pulse yet, but we will. And then what's broadcaster? Broadcaster is just loop over all the outputs and send a low pulse, right? All right, and then we're just gonna send back um, uh, p count zero and p count one and that's what gets returned okay so let's see if we can do one pulse self pulse let's see if it blows up yeah it worked it did something eight and four is that correct i think that's correct right eight lows there's four lows there four lows there yeah that's what they in fact that's what they said all right and then for the second input does it say how many oh yeah each one's different this time okay so let's run it a thousand times with the with uh part two actually what we can do is good mark says it's correct yay um what we can do is we can accumulate all of this right uh, a thousand times um, let my counts equals zero zero comma zero there we go um, uh, let a b equal this and we can say counts of zero plus equals a counts of one plus equals b and this messed up there and then this we just return counts zero times counts of one or we could iter product on them right so that's 32 whatevers and then let's try um input two and see if it comes up with the example output for that 116 875 double zero yes okay so let's try it with the real input and we get this big number. Hey, that's the right answer. Huzzah. Okay. Clippy has a lot of um, suggestions. One is using all instead of folding true over everything, which makes sense. Um, although we should be able to flip it and use any, right? Epic Blog says, woot, getting close to a end of AOC. Yeah. It's almost all over and then we have to wait another 11 months for the next one um so out should be any val any val oops what was i'm gonna go back i'm not gonna look at part two yet um i have to get this straight in my brain here if everything's high it sends low so that's what we want to do i guess i guess all val val and not it right
Yeah, that's the same number. But I thought I I figured I should be able to do it with an any without having to put a not in the front. Anyway, um, what's next on Clippy's list of mistakes? Line 68, I shouldn't have to do that. Stripping prefix manually. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I could do that. But I don't want to I don't want to strip it because I need the full thing here. Yeah, and what does it suggest I do for broadcast? Yeah, it ignores the whole issue with getting the full string for broadcast. Uh, is there a, a better way to do this? I could say or LHS starts with Yeah, no, because if we if we strip it right away. Oh, it won't strip if it doesn't start with it, right. Um, and what is it called? It's called um oh it's just a string name. Okay. So I should be able to say if let some name equals LHS strip prefix ampersand uh, percent then do that and this becomes name to string and then this becomes else if let some name equals strip prefix and it's probably going to complain about this being a string instead of a, a character all right. Um, then we already have the name uh, to string. Oops, got a double comma, comma, put a dot there. Yeah, okay. And now Clippy's happy too. Good. Okay. That's a little, a little better. Um, let's commit these changes. Git status, git add source, git commit dash m 2023 day 20 part one. All right, now we can look at part two. Uh, I can't, there we go. Okay, continue to part two. Part two, very short. In the final machine responsible for moving the sand down to Island Island has a module attached named Rx. The machine turns on when a single low pulse is sent to Rx. Reset all modules to the default states, waiting for all pulses to be fully handled after each button press. What is the fewest number of button presses required to deliver a single low pulse to the module named Rx? Good Monk says, here comes the fun part. All right, well, I mean, the obvious solution is probably not going to work, right? Um, oh, the only thing is, how do I reset everything? Because <laughs> I've been messing around with the modules this whole entire time. I got to go through and reset everything to lows. All right. Well, I mean, how hard could that be? Um, for module in self values, iter. Is there a values mute? modules there's a values yeah I know that but is there um, V now use mute there is look at that and now I can go through each one match module and we can just reset everything to zeros no code actions why not Oh, because again, it's a module, not a module. Okay. Module, not a module type. Um, I have to do this thing here. And all I care about is the outputs. No, oh, no, I need the module type as well. Uh, for module mod type outputs in right now i have it okay match mod type i knew i'd get it eventually 
So uh, flip-flop for S, we're just going to set uh, uh, S to false. Uh, conjunction of state set. Let's do the broadcaster one because that's easy. Uh, we're going to loop over all the sets for S in SS. S equals false. I don't know if I can do that, but that's what I'm going to try and then let Russ tell me I can't do it. Can't mutate ver immutable variable S. But this is a mutable hash. Oh, values. Now can I mutate it? Yes. Okay, so this resets it. Um, and now we want to loop forever until Rx gets a low pulse. How do we know if Rx got a pulse? I guess we would actually have to track that here. Um, if dest is equal to rx, and I'm assuming it's not going to happen in the first thousand pulses. If dest is equal to rx and it's sent to low pulse, right? Single low pulse, not pulse. Oh, goes in here. Then turn zero zero. It's a little hacky. Returning zero, zero like that. Um, but again, I think this is not going to be if zero, zero is equal to self pulse. And we need to count. So I'll open it after loop count loops. Actually, so I should be doing it this way instead. Uh, loop count. Um, uh, no, I should be doing it this way. AOC lib output loop. And this is break loop count there we go i am frey thank you for the follow welcome all right um oh i'm not using outputs okay All right, this means it hasn't stopped yet. Cargo run release is the next option. And the last option is to actually try to understand what the, the thing is doing. Now we don't have a test input, so we can't test the test input. Um, so we might as well take a look at our input, 2023, 20, 20, and see if there's anything that jumps out to us for um, what Rx. NC sends to Rx, and NC is a conjunction. So in order for NC to send a low, where is it? Ah, so all of its inputs need to be high. Okay, so how many inputs does it have? HH, LK, FN, FH, that's it. Okay, four, there's four inputs. And what are they again? All right, LK. Uh, let's go here and, and handle those. If pulse, if we're getting a high pulse and dest is equal to LK or dest is equal to 
fn or dest is equal to fh or dest is equal to hh then what do we want to do i want to print out the the loop or what the loop count is when this happens i want to see if there's anything anything we can discover from this um and we don't have the loop count so but i could just pass it in right println at count loop count dest was sent a high signal right and that's all we care about name too many things pulse and for part one doesn't matter what the loop count is in part two we can just pass it in um i'm going to let this continue to run and we'll see who wins first a uh, new tab with the current profile there we go creates aoc 2023 there we go so cargo run Oh, okay. We got a lot. Got more than uh, more than I could handle. I thought it was going to go slower. <laughs> uh, less. Oh. Oh, this is because it's part one. Um, I, I shouldn't care about part one. So if um, LC is greater than zero, and there we go. Let's try this again. All right, so count one, it was sent high, F, H, L, K, H, H, and F, N. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything, any particular pattern here. I mean, it looks like they're being sent high signals on every loop. Oh no, I want to see what they're outputting, right? Yeah, misery says all have to be high at the same time. I need to see what their what the output of these guys is. Because these are the things that are sending it to NC, and NC has to output a high. Okay. Ooh, okay, that makes it a little more complicated. And they are all uh, NC. That's a conjunction. That's a conjunction, that's a conjunction. And that's, okay, so they're all conjunctions. So we do this and say if out count uh, is sending a high signal. That's what I care about. All right, try again. There we go. Now, now we're getting output that I was kind of expecting. So this has a cycle. So we can look at all the cycles. Right? Fn here to Fn here. Is it just... It should just be LCM again, right? Just like um, we had the other day, right? Because all, all these are doing is cycling every however many. And if we can compute the cycle where they all line up and all send a, um, a high signal at the, on the same loop count, that's when Rx is going to get its um, low pulse. Let me put this in as the answer, and then we'll I'll, I'll modify just to see if that's right, and then we'll modify the code accordingly. Um, so where's part one? 
or the beginning of part two. So this is what we're gonna do. It's gonna, we're gonna cheat. Um, I already have an LCM thing, println LCM of these four values. Uh, and then we have to modify the code so that I don't hard code these things, but I figure out what Rx is. Hmm. I didn't want to do that. D2W. Right. And then here, 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 and here. And we're going to do this and this. I'm going to say let. Um, cycles equal and cycle cycle dot LCM. All right, and we have to pull in our math and magic to get LCM. Oh, right, and it's an optional thing you might not have an LCM. Okay, let's see. Oops, multiply with overflow. Ah, these have to be bigger. All right, let's see if this is the answer. And if it is, then I'm gonna rewrite the code to be able to detect that automatically. And if it's not the answer, then I have to come up with some other Hey, that's the right answer. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back because um, I want to now make this code. So what we need to do is find Rx uh, to generalize it. So we're going to look for Rx, right? And then find out what it's being sent. Um, this, this thing should still be running because the number is huge, right? This is going to take however how many cycles? 238 trillion cycles. Well, it says I give up, honestly. Well, I can, I can walk through how I did it. If we take a look at the um, input file, we're asked to find out Rx, right? When does Rx get sent to low pulse? So my naive approach was to just run it and see when it happened. So knowing that Rx has got to get a low pulse, and we know that it's connected to a, um, a conjunction, right? And I'm going to assume, because this is the way these puzzles work, is they're always it's always going to be this way. Um, it's, we know it's connected to a conjunction. And that conjunction will only send a low pulse if all of its inputs send high pulses. So I said, okay, well, let's take a look at what it's connected to. And it's connected to a conjunction, a conjunction, a conjunction, and a conjunction. So I, I looped through these and I found out that there are four conjunctions that the... Um, antecedent of Rx was connected to. So then I said, well, let's take a look at what those guys are doing. And when do they flip on and off? And after a couple of false starts, I was able to figure out for each one of the four, they have a certain cycle, right? They flip on here and then they flip on again here and then they flip on again here. And because the cycle is regular, we don't have to worry about CRT. We could just use LCM for these four values and get the answer. <clears throat> yeah. So that's that's what I came up with. And it seemed to work, but I hard coded these things in here. So now I'm gonna work on, I got, I have time. It's only 810. Um, let me figure out how to work my way backwards from Rx. Uh, find out what the four conjunctions are before Rx, and then um, um, see see what we can do to our pulse code to get the the values out. So we know that out, uh, Rx is an output only. We need to find it 
in the list of outputs to see what it's connected to. So we can say for M in self modules, um, and this modules is values, right? We just care about the values. Oh, let's let's put our reset code up at the top. That should come first. Reset all flip flops and conjunctions. Conjunctions. There we go. Um, this is the cheat code. So we're going to go through all the values. Um, and we care about the outputs now. Module outputs. Right? And we're going to look for the output that has. Oh. Right? Because we want to find out what the name is that the, that output is connected to. If outputs contains rx, then we found it, right? We'll call it source equals some name break. There we go. Mohat says, do all cycles start from zero? Um, well, I mean, you're, you're being asked what um, loop count, or how many button pushes it takes to, to um, send Rx a low pulse. So you, you're, you are starting from zero. Only because, you know, he asked you to reset everything here. All right, reset all the modules to their default states. So you're starting from zero. So every module starts at, at the initial state again. All right, so now I should be able to print out, we're gonna, we're gonna blow this away because this is no longer relevant. This will never work. Um, uh, so we're gonna go from name to uh, Rx, right? And right now, AOC lib output, nothing yet. Let's do that. And now I can switch this back over here. This is still running, right? Because it's gonna take trillions. Okay, bacon, let's save this. Oh, source, that's what I meant. Uh, outputs is a vec of string, right? Do I have to ampersand it? Yeah, we're not using Mathemagic anymore. Um, we are going to need it eventually, but can't I? Can't I use contains on this? Oops. Let's do this. Which true change true if the slice contains the element with the given value. Do I have to two string it? Is that what it's looking for? No. Oh, consider borrowing? Okay. Um oh, I put a semicolon there. Okay, so now it's telling me NC contains uh, NC points to Rx. So now we have to look one more level back to find all of NC's values. Um, so we have to say, if let some, no, let some source equals source else, uh, panic could not find predecessor to Rx, right? And then this can just be source. So that should still work. NC to Rx, perfect. So now we're gonna say, let what? 
predecessors, pre predecessors, pre pre equals vec new. And we're just going to loop through all of the modules again and find anything that maps to source. Now, source is a string. So we can just put source in here. And instead of saying source some name, we say pre pre push name clone. And we can just say now println of source equals pre pre. Oh, source. Uh oh, oh, because I put break. There we go. Now we get them all. Okay. And now that we're armed with this information, we should be able to pass it up to Pulse and give it a vec of um, basically this vector. Um, and now we don't want this. Or this. We do want to check, right? Oh, I didn't even give it a name. Um, call it the keys. So we're going to say if keys not keys is empty and out, right? then we want to, if we're sending a signal, if dest is in our keys, if keys contains dest, right? Then we want to return. So what I wanna actually do is return a mapping of which one and what the cycle count is. Oh, no, no, we can just return which one got um yeah, can we do position yeah i thought we could do a position oh maybe because of this keys is a reference to a vector of strings i thought keys had options like there's contained joins connect uh, well, well, reverse. Is that it? There's no find? Nothing that begins with F first? That just gets the first one. So I can do a keys iter position, right? Of dest. Can I do it that way? Uh, it requires a predicate. Right. If uh, let sum p equals this, is that a u size? It's a u size. Okay, so now I can say return zero comma p. All right, that, and that'll break out, and that'll return a zero because we're never going to get a zero in the low value because we always get that initial button push. Because it says position. Yeah, but I was forgetting to put a little iter in the in the way. Okay, so now we can just loop in part two over all these things until we have a sequence of all four. And then we just save the loop count. Right? So we can say let my like I have down here. Yeah, let's just use this code. And then this is just going to end up being the LCM of the values. Cycles. Right? And we just need to say let mut cycles equals zero 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 zero. 
Um, right, and it had to be, uh, I did a U64 on those guys, right? There. So loop count plus one. Um, if zero, oh, can I do this uh, cycle? This pulse, and we don't pass in loop count now, we pass in the pre pre, like that. Instead of break loop count, we're going to say cycles of C is equal to loop count. And then this should be just like that, right? And we just need four of them. Um, Plus equals one, if found is equal to four, break. Oh, if let. Oh, what we can't do here? Uh, ampersand string to that, okay. You can convert, okay, as I64. Oh, I should be using U64s. Let's see what this breaks. Um, we can just pass in an empty array. And now U64 as U size. We're getting closer. And that's an option again on wrap. Mohad says, isn't it possible the cycle is made of more than four conjunctions? You're right. You're right. And we already have a panic uh, attempt to divide by zero. Uh, it should be the length. You're right. Uh, vec bang zero u sixty four semicolon pre pre len. You're absolutely right. Pre pre len. Um, but we have a panic here because it found zero. Oh, it finished when it shouldn't have finished. Okay, I guess I need to print out some more data here. found k uh, at p. I can't print, oh, um, dest. Right. Oh, um, hmm. But I thought that they all, we were able to see it before. Okay, let me just keep going here. I'm gonna quit out of this and I'm just gonna loop forever. No, uh, something's something's I'm I'm not doing something right. Printlin loop count. Let's say C at loop count. Oh it's it's doing it every single time? That doesn't make sense. That's not what I was seeing before with my output. Oh, because I'm not letting the cycle finish. Oh, I'm just returning directly. Um, yeah, what we can do is... <clears throat> What happens if more than one finish? I think we're going to be lucky. In I don't think the first one, I don't think the first cycle count for any of them are going to be equivalent. So let mut this cycle equal zero. 
what we'll do is that, and then we'll just say this cycle equals p. And instead of returning, we're going to say if this cycle not equal to zero, then we're going to return zero comma this cycle else. This is very, very hacky. Um, as u64. And now, yeah, but are those the same numbers we got last time? Where's my cheat sheet? Four thousand three forty twenty-seven. Oh no, there should be a thirty-eight fifty-one in there. I'm missing one. Yeah, I'm missing the zeroth one. Oh, because this is the this is zeroth. <laughs> oh, that was dumb. Okay, well, at least it was easy to find and fix. Um, minus one. Okay, one more try. Head. Yeah, now we got the 3851 in there. Okay, and now we just multiply them together. Um, boomp, boomp, boomp. Right, so we do that. And then there's the break, and then there's the LCM. And is that the same number? Three eight five five seven. Yes. All right. Let's get rid of the print lines. Don't need that one. Don't need that one. Don't need that one. And that's that's the uh, the good one. Uh, so cargo run. All right. And did we beat the uh, other loop? We did. Look at that. How about that? Okay. So I think this is good. Um, let's do a cargo clippy. Doesn't like that. I shouldn't need to do the ampersand on the source thing. I don't like the English here. Outputs contains. It should be outputs contain, but I'm not going to worry about it. Cargo run. Good. All right. So we got uh, day 20 done. Yay.